This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today we're revisiting installing the professional firmware. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring the Minimal 3DP channel on this video in particular. I think it's time I just admit to myself that I have a problem with 3D printers. I'm an addict. My latest addiction is, it's been seen on the channel before, I enjoy buying cheap, broken 3D printers, fixing them. And right now my office is crammed with printers. My wife doesn't realize it, but there's more printers in the garage. And there may be two more printers on the way. Um, now, with all that being said, I'm really not spending that much. If you take a look on screen, uh, two weeks ago, I bought this Creality Ender 3S1 for 1550 with shipping. It wound up being about $64. And today what I'm doing is putting this printer back together, doing some fixes. And then once I have it fixed, I'm going to go ahead and sell it. Now, my goal is to sell this printer for approximately $150, is what I'm hoping to get from it. And that'll be enough probably to feed my addiction some more. I'm also hoping, and you can help with this, to find the money to purchase some better camera equipment for my office studio. And if you want to help out, feel free. I've turned on memberships. And so if you want to sponsor the channel, Besides just liking and subscribing, you can also now uh, join for a small fee for a monthly membership. And if you do, I really appreciate that. It helps a lot. And this gives me the ability, again, to, to maybe buy some better equipment and also buy some more printers and whatnot that I can fix. And in some cases, I should also mention some of the other projects or printers I've put together. I've gone ahead and given them away. So hopefully I can make a little money off this one. Again, to help, uh, I have my eye on a new camera. And so with that being said, let's get started. What I plan on doing is just going over today some of these quick fixes I'm going to do. Now I did have to order a part for the filament runout sensor, so I'm waiting for that to arrive. I won't show the installation of that on camera, but I'll show the other parts. And then what I'm going to do is install the professional firmware. It's been a while since I've done a video on the professional firmware, and I thought this would give me an opportunity to revisit. And I've also never installed the professional firmware on Ender 3 S1. So let's switch over to the printer and take a look at what problems we have, and we'll see what fixes we can do. As I'm gonna mention, I just wanna apologize for all the junk I have around. Uh, again, it goes back to having too many printers need to get rid of some. First thing we're going to notice with this printer is the camera is not lopsided. Problem right now is the bed. It was missing two of the springs. I replaced the springs on the right hand side. Now the left hand springs just don't look right. So I'm going to take those out and replace those with some other orange springs I have. And I'll show you how I do that. Again, that's pretty easy and standard fix. Another thing, if you look up here at the hot end, you'll see that there's no CR touch. And in fact, the fan and the where you attach the CR touch is busted. So I'm gonna take apart the hot end and fix that. Now I also have a PEI sheet coming. I'll show you what I bought and I'm just gonna use a magnet I have and cut it down. The PEI sheet I got off Amazon was rated well and it was $6.99, so you can't go wrong with that. So let's switch over to the printer and we'll work on the springs and then we'll work on the hot end. So my first step, I've taken the bed totally off and what I want to do is before I tighten the screws, I want to get this bed seated correctly. Part of it is the screws are just all messed up. And so I need to tighten things and work on the concentric nuts that are under here and use that to tighten the bed. So let me get my tools and then we'll start on that part of this. The first thing I want to check is just see how tight these screws really are and just see if they're in there. I want to 
Yeah, see this screw right here is really loose. So let's get the wrench on here. Let's see if we can tighten this. Let me get a little ratchet set. So I have my little ratchet set. I'm just going to tighten this screw. I've tightened the screws a little bit, and what I'm just doing now is I'm just putting my little ratchet over top, and I'm just turning these tightening bolts at the bottom. What I'm trying to do is get this to be a steady platform. I have a little bit of a wiggle here. And so just a little, I want to do this a little bit more. And I think the front needs a little bit more as well. As you can see, it's now no longer wiggling. So that's actually perfect. Appears to be gliding good. So I'm really pleased with that now. Like I said, the goal was to get this, you want this nice and steady. One of the reasons somebody could have returned this is the fact it just didn't print well. Well, one reason it won't print well is if everything's all loose, you won't get any exactness. So now that this is tight, let's put the bed back on and we'll also put on the bed springs. Now, since the bed's facing me, what I'm going to do is put on the side facing me first. So I'm just going to slip these springs on, sort of hold everything together. And then line the springs up with the holes. Now, I'm then going to take the bed nuts, push the spring down, and put the bed nut on. I'm not going to put it tight because I don't want it to mess me up as I try to do the other side. I need enough play where I can move things around. And as you can see, I need, I said, slack so I can do both sides. So I'm getting this side in and then I'll switch sides of the printer. and go over there. Okay, so that's in. Now I'll do the other side off camera and then we'll take a look at next steps. Okay, so we have the bed back together and I think it's actually looking pretty good. It looks sort of level and I say sort of. But right now that's good enough. We'll have to adjust it. So let's switch over and fix that hot end. And once we have the hot end fixed, we should be able to work on getting our professional firmware installed. So let me switch over so we can look at the hot end and then we'll take that apart. Now I hate to say one of the reasons why I want to get a new camera is image stabilization is a problem. Now, you'll notice with this hot end, it's super loose. Also the fan cover is broken. So let's get this all fixed. And then we can uh, replace parts and we'll also get that carriage tightened up. Now, I really like the Sprite hot ends. In fact, I'm being honest, I've switched over between this and the BQ H2, was it version 2S? Those are the two extruders I'm using on pretty much everything now. Personally, I like consistency, and also I'm discovering that as I have problems, it's easier for me just to have one set of parts. Now, I did try standardizing with Volcano hot ends and the BMG, and I really like that. But that turned into a problem as well, mainly because of dock systems. Every printer sort of needed a different dock. 
and that to me is sort of a bit of a pain as well. Now I'm just going to hold this in front of the camera. So if you take a look at this, you'll see that the CR touch is broken here. So what we're going to do is let's take this fan cover off and I've printed the replacement. So I'll switch over to my desk and work on that. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is an awesome service that lets you design and then they build for you PCB boards. One of their awesome features is you can go to their instant quote, you can upload a Gerber file, and then based on the parameters you put in, they'll give you an instant quote. I'm going to apologize for the state of my desk. All my Voron stuff has all been pushed to the side. And I just need to work on that. Like I said, I apologize. So what I'm doing is looking at this cover. And really, this is pretty simple to come off here. So like I said, I apologize for the state of the desk. This looks like it's going to be a real easy effect. Ah, so there we go. So there's that. And then where did I just set down uh, the printed piece? So here's the printed piece. And I'll be honest, this is significantly lighter than this. That's probably good. I don't have threaded inserts that fit. So what I'm going to try to do is just make do without um, now, my printed part looks really good. I'm really pleased with the way that looks. And I mean, and I love it when you can print something. Now, what's funny is with this fan cover, which I've noticed on several of these I've bought used. Is either broken or missing. You can't get any um, replacement parts for these. And I only found one printed part that would work. So I found one model. Oops. I used the wrong screw. So I've only found one that worked. Now what I, I wound up doing is the one I found didn't have this little hatch mark cover over it, which I actually like the hatch mark cover because it protects the fan a little bit. And so uh, somebody, and I'll put a link to the um, model, they had a copy of the whole extruder and so I was able to just pull out this little piece. I took off this little piece on the end here. So I cut this off. That way I could print it just like this flat. And as you can see, it printed pretty well. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's good enough for me. Now, what I'm going to try to do is this needs to go in like this. Now, I'm a little weary that this won't screw into the plastic, but we'll see what we can do. That feels like a bit. Let's put this in place here. Yeah, that bit into the plastic. So I don't want to go too tight. So I don't want to strip it. And now I did notice one side's broken here. I'm not going to worry about that. It's the belt clips in fine. Now I'm going to be a little bad here. I'm going to take CR touch off another one of my printers and put it on this. Because if I'm going to sell it, I might as well sell with the actual 
see our touch and not a clone. Now, personally, I don't mind the clones. I usually have good luck with those. Now, this hot end itself, there's a little, little filament built up here, but that looks okay. I'm looking at the connections there. Those all look good. Now, I am seeing, now that I'm looking at this, there's a dang piece of filament stuck in there. Now, they broke it off right at the extruder. Now, what I'm going to hope is that's PLA. And what I'll do is I'll push another piece of PLA. I'll open this up and try to push through with a piece of PLA when I heat this up. I'll heat this up to something like 240. And that way, it's really hot. Push it through. And hopefully, that'll be all right. So... That looks correct. Now let's switch over back to the switch back over to my printer and let's get the carriage tightened up. Okay, so to tighten this, what I should need to do is these nuts to tighten is right here at the bottom. So I'm just going to try to twist this around, see what it does. I never know which way to go. Hmm. That feels like I chose correctly. Well, let's get back around a little bit. As you can see, it's no longer shaking. It's shaking a little bit. There we go. I think that's nice and rock solid. Now I'm just checking this. The wheels appear to be spinning correctly. Uh, the bell. Be tighten a little bit more. So let's put the hot end back on. Now I just noticed there's another screw here to get my fan piece more securely on there. And let's get these screws in. Now, prop boy. There we go. As you can see, it's on there tight. Let's get a CR touch. And as I said, I'm just going to be bad and take one off another printer and I'll switch things all around here. Okay, so I have my CR Touch and I'm just going to plug this in. So that's plugged in. And I just need to install it right here. Now, what I am going to do is just turn the printer on just to verify that everything comes back on. Now, let me plug in the touch screen. So now I'm just going to turn this on just to make sure everything's still powering on. And BL Touch did go. Now the screen is working. So I'm going to go ahead and pause for the night. And in my next video, I'll proceed with installing the professional firmware. Once I have it installed, I'll probably also do a separate video on just going through the basic configurations and tuning it all in. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to post them below. If you like what I'm doing, give me a like, maybe subscribe. I really appreciate it and can't wait to talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a good day. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15-minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally, what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.